Welcome back to my Windows Server training series. I think we've made it all the way to part 16. So let's dive into today's lesson. That's going to be on DFS, that is Distributed File System Namespaces. Moving on to what is DFS. DFS is going to stand for Distributed File System Namespaces. It's a role slash service. It just allows you to group any of your shared folders into one singular location, and that's going to be your actual namespace. So what are the primary benefits of doing this? You're going to have a lot better redundancy and availability. If you use namespaces with DFSR, which is 99% of the time deployed in tandem together, which we'll get into in the next lesson, it's going to ensure that you don't have a single point of failure with any of your shares. You also have ease of access because there's one singular location. If you add any servers in the future, that location is not going to change. You can just add those servers to your namespace and you're good to go. Finally, scalability. New DFS servers are incredibly easy to maintain and set up, so scaling out is very easy. Then in our lab today, we're going to use a new VM. It's going to be called GT-File2. I have pre-set up all of this just to save us some time. We've gone over how to do this in some previous lessons. So if you need to know how to do this, just look at the last file server lesson that I uploaded, and you'll pretty much just be doing that the exact same way but specifying this name and IP address, etc. So we're going to configure GT file 2 as a file server. It's already on the domain, but it's pretty much just a blank box. It's sitting there with the name, and we're going to install the DFS namespace role on GT file 1 and GT file 2. We're going to create a new namespace, and then finally we're going to demonstrate how these namespaces work. So let's go ahead and hop into our lab. All right, over in our lab, let's go ahead and connect to file 1. And we're also going to connect to file 2. If you recall, in the PowerPoint, we were saying that GT file 2 has not yet been set up as a file server. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to open up Server Manager. And let's go ahead and add a new role. Click Next, Next, Next. File and Storage Services. And we're going to select File Server. DFS namespaces, and we're good. We're going to check the restart the destination server automatically if required. I don't believe this needs a restart, but we'll know in just a moment. And while that's going, we're going to go over to our original file server, add roles and features, next, 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 expand file and storage services, and let's click the box for DFS namespaces here as well. Same deal with restart, sure, and install. And as soon as these are done, we'll follow back up. Now that we're back with our roles installed, we actually did not need a reboot, so that's awesome. It's going to speed us up just a little bit. So let's go ahead and open up DFS names or DFS management on each server. Perfect. So that installed successfully, and we're ready to create our first namespace. Let's go ahead and right click on the original file server. We're going to select new namespace. For server, we're going to say GT file one and next. And for the name here, let's go ahead and check our share. So we have our engineering, hidden shares, marketing. That's fine. But what we're going to do is we're going to say company share is going to be our namespace. We're going to enable Windows Server 2008 mode. I really don't like how this is still a thing. It just means that you get extra functionality that was added with 2008, and it's been there ever since. So let's go ahead and do that, and next. So we see our namespace here. Oh, that looks good. And let's create. And it's there. So another thing we have to do on our secondary server is we're going to go ahead and add a namespace to the display because it will not automatically add itself. We see our namespace that's new and created there. So let's go ahead and click OK. And there we go. So let's drag this back over here. And let's do some extra configuration just to get this the way that we want it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to click Namespace Servers. And we're going to add our server. And we're just going to call this one our GT file 2. And that's going to be the one we're pulling from. And we should receive confirmation that it's enabled in just a moment. 
It's going to run through all the necessary checks it needs just to confirm that it can be added as a server. And as soon as it confirms that that DFS service is running, it's going to create the shared folder and commit the changes. This can take a moment, so we're going to go ahead and let this percolate, and we'll view it in a moment. And we're back. So that took a minute or two to finalize. Usually it's not too terribly long, but it can take a minute. Let's go ahead and go to our namespace now. And here's where we're actually going to create our folders that target the different folders on a server. So this will actually give us a singular location. So we see our namespace for the company share. So this new folder, if we go back and look at our drive here. So we see it's Z marketing. Let's go ahead and do the marketing first. We're just going to call this marketing and for the folder target we're going to do browse and we're going to look at marketing and pick so there it is so we're going to click ok and we don't have that created on gt file 2 just yet so let's go ahead and do that so we're going to do more options and new and marketing and let's go ahead and do the same thing with engineering as well make sure we're not missing anything else there there should be the two primary ones we have perfect we don't have to worry about the hidden share currently all right so let's go here we're at our next target we're going to say it's et file 2 slash marketing and okay and looks like it does not exist oh silly me i forgot that we have to share that out so let's go ahead and do that and create our share and we can just leave it as quick type a custom path company share data we're going to hit marketing sure that's fine okay crypt data access access based enumeration and we're going to disable caching of share and create all right perfect while we're in here let's go ahead and create our engineering share and we're going to use the same exact settings as before All right, perfect. All right, so now that both of those are created, let's go ahead and do this. And there we go. So we're gonna click OK. And we're not gonna configure a replication group just, just yet. We're gonna go ahead and do that in our next lesson. Now, what's pretty cool is if we go to our namespace, which we can now see on our domain, Okay, there's our target. So we see marketing is currently there. So what you'll notice is this folder is empty and that's because currently it is pulling from file server number two. Let's go ahead and make it so DFS only points to the first file server since we're not doing replication yet. So let's go to marketing here and we see our folder targets. Let's go ahead and disable GT file two as a target. So now that we've done that, if we go back here into marketing, and what we'll actually go ahead and do to speed it up, let's go ahead and run this command here. We're going to do DFS util pkt flush. That's going to force the cache to update, which should allow us to go straight to it. And once we do, we should see, yep, picks for picnic. So that means it's pulling from DT file one. So just to double confirm, we look at company share and there's marketing. Very cool. So with marketing out of the way, let's go ahead and add our engineering folder. So we're going to go back and select new folder. Let's call it engineering. 
Let's add our targets. Add our second. And we'll say no for now. We don't want to create a replication group just yet. And there we go. So now we have our engineering folder. Let's go ahead and test it. Perfect. There we go. Let's go ahead and just create a couple of test files here for our next lesson. And we're good to go. That's going to cover it for this lesson. I debated on adding replication in with this one, but I really felt like I wanted to do it separate. Most people tend to lump them all into one, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I wanted to take a little bit of a deeper dive into replication. So that way you know exactly how it works and how to troubleshoot it as well if there's a problem. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope you check out my next video.